Hello, my most amazing artist. So today we are going to start our Christmas project. And I know it's pretty early. It's not even Thanksgiving, but I want us to go and get started because by the time we have Thanksgiving and then we have our NTI week and we come back, it'll be almost Christmas. And we want to make sure we have these done and we could look at them and enjoy them during the Christmas season and not get them right before we leave for Christmas break. So what you need for this project is a nine by 12 piece of black paper or just a black piece of construction paper. You can decide the size. You'll need your oil pastels. I put some in your kits for your tiger, so you should have oil pastels. If you don't have oil pastels for some reason, crayons could work, but oil pastels really are the key here. You'll need, um, I created a template for your class. It's a nine by six inch template that you can trace. You just need a rectangle that you can put in the center of your paper to create like a frame, okay? Then you need a ruler and we're not gonna measure anything. We're just gonna use the ruler as a width guide or a straight edge. You don't even need really a pencil for this. We're kinda gonna do it all with oil pastels, I think. If you would like to trace your tracer, with a pencil first, go right ahead, whatever makes you comfortable. So if you have a tracer, you're gonna kind of set it in the center, sorry, and have it so it looks like there's an even amount of space all the way around. Cause we're trying to create a window. So this will be the house and this part's the window. So once you have that, you can get your pencil or your oil pastel and carefully trace all along the edge of your tracer. Try to keep it neat because we can't erase oil pastel. So if you're more comfortable doing this in pencil, you can. It's just hard to see pencil on black paper. That's why I'm doing the white so you can see it. And then you lift it up and voila, you have your window. If you can't find a tracer, you're not sure what to trace, you can maybe put a book down or something that's rectangle. It doesn't have to be even. Just use whatever you have at home that you make it work. Or you can even use your ruler and kind of line it up all of the edges, but sometimes that can get tricky. All right, we're gonna still use, actually not, we're not going to. We are gonna take our brown oil pastel for this next step. So I'm gonna turn my paper kind of to the side. And we are gonna use our ruler to make lines. So I'm gonna take my ruler and try to keep my ruler straight. I'm gonna line it up against that white line I did. I'm going to see the little white line a little bit. So I'm going to take my oil pastel and I'm going to rub it against this side, stop when I get to the white corner, jump and come over here and do it over here too. So I'm just drawing a line, a short straight line. And I like to go vertical, but if you prefer going side to side, keep it the way it was. So then when I move my ruler, I have that line, but put your ruler back. So what we're doing is we're using our ruler's width or how wide it is to give us like siding or bricks for our house. So when I'm done, I have this. So what I did is I laid my ruler down, lined it up against the top edge of my window, little dash here on both sides of my ruler. So now I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm move it to that next line. I'm gonna try to line up as best I can, keeping my ruler as straight as I can and I'm gonna draw a line on each side. Then I'm gonna pick up my ruler and do the same thing. I'm gonna keep picking up my ruler and making lines on either side of my ruler, not crossing over, I'm not going through my window. I don't wanna slide my ruler because oil pastel is really creamy and we don't wanna make it a mess. So you're gonna keep doing this until you get to the end. So I pick it up line it up and you're gonna get a little oil pastel on your ruler nothing a wet paper towel a washcloth or a baby wipe won't clean up but ask before you use the ruler at home we don't want to ruin somebody's ruler all right so this next one i'm gonna line it up on the edge again and do it on both sides this way and it might not be perfectly even for this one and that's okay so you decide what one you want to be the top and what you want to be the bottom. I'm gonna make my fatter one to the top. So now I have all these lines here. This is probably where your class is gonna finish. 
on Tuesday, but I'm going to keep going because we're going to work on this Wednesday as well. So I'm going to sign the same thing both days. We have all week to work on this. So once you have this, we want to start coloring. But first, I want to add a little interest and highlight because if we color too closely, we might not see those lines. So we're going to get out our black crayon oil pastel. And I'm just going to kind of lightly draw black oil pastel over my lines just so I can have a difference so I know where I'm going. I know, so to you, it looks like I had blacked it out. So keep that out. So I'm going to take my oil pastel and it helps. These are brand new, so this is hard. If you want to peel the paper off and use it side by side, you can do that. Um, that's what I'm going to ask them to do in class, but I know it's hard for some friends to take an oil pastel that's new and make it smaller. I'm not going to have you break it. So I'm just going to use the side of my oil pastel. I'm going to rub up and down because I want that texture. I don't want it to be too smooth. And I put that black there as our guideline. So it kind of looks like a space. So I'm just using that side of my oil pastel to give a little bit of a rough texture in all my spaces. And I'm going to do that on both sides. And it's okay that it's not completely filled. I actually really like that. So I peeled off the paper, I'm just holding it outside. I'm kind of, oops, I gotta go do my black over here too. Because the black kind of gives us that space, that illusion that things are going back into space. Because we're working on texture and space, all those elements of art. So now I can go through and I'm just kind of roughly go quickly. I don't want to bring it into my window. If a little bit comes in, that's okay. So I'm just going back and forth. The black paper is showing through. So now I have, it looks like bricks kind of on both sides. So I'm gonna turn my paper horizontal and I'm gonna kind of color the same way on the bottom. I'm not pushing very hard. I'm kind of going really light and a little fast because I want it to jump around. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Okay. So go back over and see what you think of your brick work. I am gonna go back in with my black oil pastel and really darken up those lines so it kind of gives that illusion of siding or planks or something. But you do whatever you think looks best for yours because we're building our house. So I kind of really like that. So we're gonna leave that alone. And don't worry about the white. If that's bothering you, don't worry about it. We'll fix that later. Okay. So sometimes at Christmas time, my favorite thing to do is to drive through my neighborhood and look at the Christmas lights. And what's always neat is when people put their Christmas trees in front of a window, so you can kind of peek through their windows and see their beautiful Christmas trees. So that's what we're doing. We're making a Christmas tree window. So inside our house, we have to draw the tree. So we can't finish drawing our window until we draw the tree, right? So we're gonna need to get our greens out. We have a dark green and a light green. So we want our tree to fill up this window. We don't want our tree to go outside our window because it needs to look like it's behind, like the window's overlapping that tree. So if our tree kind of goes out and has to stop, that's okay. It'll give that illusion of that triangle. So you have to decide what kind of Christmas tree do you want? Now I want you to take two fingers and put two fingers towards the top. That gives us room for a star. And then find the middle and kind of put a little dot about two fingers down from the top, but in the middle. And if it's not perfect, don't worry about it. Number oil pastels, you never want to smear. You just tap them off into your garbage can, put that dot there, and we're ready to go. I'm using my darker green color first. You can do whatever you like. And then I'm gonna draw, start by drawing an upside down V. Okay, then I'm gonna go underneath that and draw another upside down V getting a little bit bigger every time I do it. So I'm gonna to try to keep it lined up and if you need to draw a little bit of a line here to help you, I did it really light because I don't want that to make sense, but I drew a little line straight down the middle to help me keep centered, otherwise your tree might be a bit wonky. All right, so we have our, and we're gonna keep drawing V's or upside down V's from that line and they can start kind of curving up 
and you decide, do you want a skinny tree? Do you want to leave a fat tree? Mrs. Cole likes really full trees. So hers always end up going off the paper and that's okay. Just keep drawing your V's until you can't draw any V's anymore. And mine got kind of far apart here. So I'm gonna go back when I'm done and just fill in some lines. So I'm really doing upside down V's or more diagonal lines to fill in my tree branches, okay? So you, once you get that basic shape, you're good. So you can put your dark green down and get your light green. And now you can go in and add some light green in that black space. Going the diagonal lines you've already drawn, we're just kind of filling them in. We wanna kind of hide that black paper and fill up our tree a little bit. Okay. Okay. Now this seems a little light for Mrs. Cole. So I'm gonna go back to my darker green crayon and blend it. One of my favorite things about oil pastels is they're so easy to blend and mix together without having to smear it. So I'm just kind of going through and coloring over the top. I still want those lines to show through because we're using line to give the illusion of texture and that shape. So once you're happy with how your tree looks, and I like that, you're done with your green, voila. So now we have another decision to make. Do we want a star on the top of our tree? And if you want a star on the top of your tree, I would get your yellow oil pastel and you can draw a star if you know how, or you can draw a circle. I know some friends put angels on the top of their tree and some people don't put anything at all on their tree. It's up to you. So I am just gonna have a little bit of light shining. So I'm adding little lines to make it look like my star is glowing a little bit. All right, so now what's missing on our tree? ornaments, probably ornaments. Now I'm not sure how far your class is going to get. This might be as far as we get this week on Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday and Wednesday, but you never know. So I'm going to keep going. So once you have your tree drawn the way you like in your star, if you're tired and you want to take a break, that's fine. Again, this is not due until probably the week of Thanksgiving. So don't even worry about it. So you can work a little bit on the frame and maybe take a break, then draw your tree and then take a break. Or if you're having fun, keep going. Again, it's your call. So you need to decide your ornaments. Ornaments or Christmas lights is what we need to put on our tree. I like to use nice bright colors like the bright blue. I'm gonna do orange. I'm gonna do some red. All right, so I'm gonna take some fun colors and just start sprinkling ornaments all over my tree. I'm gonna just using little circles because we gotta get this color to go over the other colors. And don't worry if they don't show up a lot, I have a trick for that. So just start kind of sprinkling your little round, they can either be ornaments or Christmas tree lights. You decide how big or small they are. I'm gonna add, oh, the yellow doesn't really show up so I'm not gonna use yellow. Let me see what the red does. Sometimes the colors don't show up like we think they're going to, and that's okay. So they look a little dark now, but I want you to hold on and trust me. So if you're using this with long sleeves like Mrs. Cole is, you might want to push your sleeves up because I'm getting oil pastel on my shirt. All right, I'm gonna add some blue. Oh yeah, that blue really shows up. I like that one, the light blue. So just keep adding your Christmas lights or your ornaments and you can just keep going, kind of scatter them around. You want to think about balance. It looks like it weighs the same on both sides, but don't get too concerned about that. These are kind of bright. I'm going to go back over the bright blues with my darker blue, but that's a personal choice. You decide what you like. Okay. So now, yeah, I like it a little bit darker so it blends in a little bit better. All right, maybe I have one down here. Okay, you can have so much fun with this. So you wanna get your white oil pastel out now. And we wanna go over all our lights and give them a little bit 
of a reflection. And I'm just kind of going across the top and kind of swirling in on the same sides. I'm always going, I go from the right side, you go from the left. I'm kind of blending in a backward C on one side to give that illusion of round, okay? It doesn't have to be bright white. We don't really want it to be bright white. We just want to give, hit it with that reflection or that highlight. Some of these are pretty tiny, so you just do your best. And if you kind of circle in a little circles, it blends in more so it doesn't look so stark white. And if your oil pastel gets really, really dirty, I'll show you what we can do to clean it in a second. So hit all your ornaments on that one side to give it a little bit of reflection. And if your oil pastel looks like mine, it's pretty dirty. What you can do is on the back of your paper or with a clean, another dirty paper, just kind of color it off. And just kind of clean it by coloring it off, okay? So, looks pretty good, right? But we're not done. Now we have to add the window. And this is where most of my second graders start whining and no, I don't want you to do that. Don't ruin my window. We can get a ruler again. And we have to draw like a window pane. Most windows have at least two sections. Sometimes they have four and sometimes they have six. This is your window in your house. You decide what you wanna do. And yes, I know some windows are just completely plate glass, but we wanna have at least a little division in our window. So the first thing I want you to do is find about where the middle is and line up your ruler. And you're gonna take your white oil pastel and you're gonna go from one side of your window, not on your house, from the white line all the way across the other white line. And we just divided it. So now it looks like our tree was pushed back inside the house, and that's kind of what we want. You could leave it at one. I like to have the four pane window. So as best you can guess, line up your ruler and bring one down in the middle. And my window's not exactly even on both sides, but that's okay, I didn't, we don't have to measure. So I'm gonna leave it like this. So this is my window. If you wanna add more window panes to it, you can. Now here's the fun part. It's winter, right? So it's snowing. So we wanna take our white oil pastel and start thickening the bottom to make it look like there's frost or snow on the bottom of our window ledge. So it's okay here and it's gonna blend a little bit with your green and that's okay. We're gonna keep going. Try to keep that bottom line straight and you decide how much it snowed the night before or that night. You can have that snow calling up the sides, piling up in the middle. You can do lots of snow or just a little snow. So I'm thickening up that bottom ledge and giving it that snowy look. Now you can do the same at the top or you can leave it. That's up to you. I'm gonna kind of leave it because I wanted to get that illusion of snow kind of fell down on my windowsill. If you like a lot of snow, you can keep building it. There's really no right or wrong. You just don't want to cover too much of your tree. All right. Okay. So if your white gets dirty, just clean it. So now we want to add snow like on the outside. So you decide how much it's snowing. You can just dot snow coming all the way across and it would even come over on top of your tree because remember the tree is outside don't forget to add snow out on your brick you can add dots like that or if you want to be more circles i like the circle snow dots maybe it's really fat flakes and some of them can be bigger than others so go ahead and add your snow but you make sure you add snow even on the house so you decide how heavy or light it's snowing and add that snow even on the bottom and don't forget to have it snow over your tree too because we want to give it that illusion that it's behind the window. We're dealing with that element of art space. So my snow doesn't have balance because it really snowed on one side but not the other and that doesn't really happen. So make sure you keep going 
And maybe you want some snow on the top of your window because maybe the top of the window ledge got snowed on too. So you can thicken that too. And add a little snow, soften those corners. Like there's a snow drift there. But you get to decide. This is your house. All right. So it's nice and snowy. You can kind of thicken the window here. And that's it. This is our Christmas window. So I can't wait to see what you guys do. Again, this might take you two to three art classes. So I'm not going to make this do actually for you guys until right before Thanksgiving. So that is the 24th, 23rd of November. So that Tuesday before we go to Thanksgiving break, this will be due. because so I want you to take your time with this. If you have any questions or you need to come pick up supplies, please let me know. I cannot wait to see your Christmas windows. Take care. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving if I don't talk to you before then. And I'll see you later. Goodbye, my most amazing artists.